Hello and welcome, Machine Dana. Hope you guys are doing really, really well. I'm really frustrated that I feel compelled enough that I need to do a video like this, to be honest. I know a lot of people that subscribe to my YouTube channel are engaged in my content are Twitch streamers, so have possibly experienced hate raids and maybe taking a day off Twitch. It's really sad that we're in a situation where people have to protest against things like hate raids. Racism, homophobia, transphobia. There shouldn't ever really be a place for that, but particularly on high volume platforms like Twitch where they have the means, the money and the power to be able to reduce or remove hate from their platform. But here we are. We are in this situation and I guess information can be power and Really, that's what this video comes down to. So in this video, unfortunately, I'm going to be talking about what hate raids are, where they come from, what Twitch is doing about them. I'm then going to be trying to provide some proactive guidance on what you can do to avoid hate raids, reduce the likelihood of them happening, or how to deal with them when they happen. Bots are nothing new on Twitch. And actually, for years, they've been grappling with follower bots, with chat bots to reduce the unauthenticity of engagement on the channel. I've been the victim of follower botting before and previously did a video about follow botting a long time ago. I don't anecdotally feel like the problem with follow bots and view bots has got any better. But hate raids, there's something a little bit different about them. They're not just some bizarre phenomenon that's happening that just increases some weird engagement like follows or like view botting. It's the spread of hatred. It's the spread of negativity and nobody wants that. If you do find this useful, please hit the like button because it will help other people gain access to this content and the help that I provide in it. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and yeah, hopefully you find this useful for combating hate raids. Also, just let me know below in the comments if you are taking part in a day off Twitch, why you're doing that and what it means to you. Hate raids are a mass spam of text chat instances, normally from bot accounts, and they repeat the same message, and the message is usually a hateful message. Often it's a homophobic message or a transphobic message, or it would be some sort of racist message. A big portion of the messages have been racist, but there's also been some others that have been related to the physical appearance of somebody. The hate raids are usually targeted. So even though it's bots that are actually sending the messages in like a high volume, impactful way, they have been triggered by a human that knows something about you. So these aren't just like random events that are happening. They're normally triggered by somebody that knows a little bit about you and they want to target you with some sort of hurtful conduct. The main reason why hate raids are happening is because there's a very small minority of people that want to spread hate, as with all society. There's a minority of people that are toxic people, probably not satisfied with their lives, and they take some sort of sick benefit or pleasure in making other people feel miserable. But another reason that hate raids are happening is because they can happen. There is a way that they can happen, and that's where Twitch comes into it and within the video I will be discussing what Twitch are actually doing about hate raids. The primary purpose of the hate raids is basically just to spread the hate, make you feel negative, in some cases to get you off or away from the platform, to spread an agenda that thankfully most people on Twitch don't share, homophobia, racism and so on. Many people probably don't know this but there are IP grabbers associated with many of the profiles that are doing these hate raids and because these are bot accounts they're actually quite recognizable so there's a number of things that you can do to reduce the likelihood that you will get hate raided. I've personally not experienced a hate raid yet, but I'm basically bracing for impact. I know it's probably going to happen at some point. And the first piece of advice that I would give in this video is that you should do the same. It's unfortunate that you should have to brace for impact, but if you know that this is possibly going to happen, the impacts of it are likely to be lower. You will deal with it better. So I think just the mentality of accepting that there are hateful people out there, and unfortunately those people do exist, but knowing that you are a better person than those people are is the first piece of advice I could give that makes this a little bit easier to deal with. So many of the accounts associated with the hate raids are actually IP grabbers. If you don't know what an IP grabber is, and I'm certainly no technical whiz myself, but my understanding is that an IP grabber can grab your IP address and understand and know what your IP address is. Now, there's actually not a huge amount of danger in somebody or an organization knowing your IP address. The most likely scenario is that you could be DDoSed, which means a denial of service attack, which means your internet will suffer a bandwidth 
issue because your IP address is being spammed with other data. But there's a pretty quick workaround to that. IP grabbers work by grabbing your IP address when you click on the profile through extensions and scripts. So the second and probably most important piece of advice I could give right now is that if you suspect anyone that follows you of being a bot, a hate raid bot, or a known hate raid bot, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the video, don't click on their profile. And if you do accidentally click on their profile, the main thing that you can do will be to reset your router or your hub, which will give you a new IP address. Literally switch on and off your hub or your router, and that will do that process for you, and you'll have a new IP address and therefore can't be DDoSed. Obviously, some people will get an email of a new follower and can click through to the profile from the email. I would encourage you not to do that if you suspect somebody of being a hate raid bot. But also, there's a list here of known IP grabbers, which I will share in the description below a link to, so you can cross-reference if you are unsure, and there are people that are keeping these up to date. So we'll get into some manual and also some automated things that you can do about this later in the video. But for the time being, I definitely recommend keeping an eye on the topic on Twitter and also on Reddit so you can keep an eye on which accounts are known hate raid and known bot accounts. So hate raids first appeared about two to three weeks ago. Today's the 1st of September and there is a hashtag a day off Twitch that is occurring essentially in protest to the hate raids that have been happening. Twitch have acknowledged that the hate raids are happening, but it doesn't seem like they've done a whole lot just yet and they're certainly not reducing the hate raids as things currently appear. And again, this is just anecdotal. There doesn't seem to be any less noise about this. In fact, if anything, it seems like the problem is getting more substantiated. More people have been experiencing hate raids. It's becoming more widespread. A lot of people on TikTok are talking about it and of course Twitter. Twitch's response initially on the 11th of August is here, basically acknowledging the problem. You're asking us to do better and we know that we need to address these issues that include an open and ongoing dialogue about creator safety. So they link here a feedback user voice here. This is where they get feedback on different functions and functionalities and things like that. They've got a safety thread and there's a load of different feedbacks here that they essentially are offering to people. People can make suggestions here, people can upvote them and some people at Twitch will respond to some of these suggestions. Then on the 20th of August, Twitch retweeted that same tweet from the 11th because nine days later, the problem actually had escalated and got worse. More of the same kind of stuff to be honest, but they do talk a little bit about the things that they've done here. We're building channel level ban evasion detection, account improvements to combat the malicious behavior for months. However, bad actors are working in parallel to essentially combat some of those things that are being put in place. And this is the reason why Twitch say that they're not sharing the details, but I'm very skeptical about this. I think it's a convenient excuse of Twitch if they're slow paced at putting in suitable solutions for them to be able to say the reason we can't give the details is because we don't want to inform other people about it. When the reason could be that they're just not acting good enough or quickly enough. I'm not suggesting that Twitch are not doing anything about this in the background. I'm sure they are. My feeling is that they're not putting enough resources to it and they're not taking enough risks with the platform to eradicate these problems. Putting out a few tweets and having a feedback form here is not good enough. They need to have account level emails. They need to have account level notifications within Twitch and people need to see action and demonstrations of the actual things that they've put in place. This is one of the ways that Twitch will gain some confidence back in the platform and service and hopefully improve the likelihood that people will feel safer, particularly marginalized creators. Now is the part of the video where I get into some really proactive solutions that you can implement on your own channel right now to reduce the likelihood of hate raids happening to you or at least reduce the impact of them. First of all, we're in your dashboard here and under moderation, you can click email verification. This means that anyone would need to have an email verification. Now this isn't gonna cover every single bot raid or hate raid, but it is likely to reduce how many can access you and your channel. Here you can also enable subscriber only chat, but you can also do that within your chat by forward slash subscriber only. You can also do forward slash follower only as well. You are able to add permitted terms and phrases here, but the problem is the, the hate raids as per the examples I've given, and I'll show it up on screen again now, they use special characters that mean that certain words are simply not recognizable. So a human viewer can recognize what that message is, but Twitch's bot viewers cannot. The problem with this is it creates so many 
tens of millions of different variations of words that can be used that from a intuitive point of view, it, you can't just put in place blocking exercises. There are literally billions of different combinations that would need to be blocked and that's just not a very intuitive solution for Twitch to implement. One of my suggestions to Twitch would be that if you set your channel to be an English speaking channel as an example, to only allow English speaking characters in chat and anything else is just simply auto modded out of your chat. And here you can see all of your banned chatters too. Now one of the problems with banning chatters is that quite a lot of these bots have been able to evade bans on channels. For example, they seem to be able to re-follow you over the course of multiple days. So just banning someone on your channel on one day doesn't guarantee that the following day or the following day that bot account will not be able to hate raid you. Blocking them and banning them might help that along even further because blocking someone adds a further level of censoring against you on Twitch. But for the time being, I'll list here and in the chat below a number of accounts that you could manually ban right now on your channel, which may reduce the likelihood of hate raids. Obviously, you need to avoid clicking through phishing emails that want to IP grab you if you're unsure about it. And maybe perhaps use Twitch Tracker to investigate the username if you are curious about whether or not someone is a legitimate account. Now the hallmarks of a legitimate account would be the account's been created a long time ago. Maybe they've done some streaming themselves. They would have some followers. Normally they would at least have a profile picture as well. These are all hallmarks of accounts that are actually human accounts rather than bot accounts. Bot accounts will frequently have a username that doesn't make sense. They will not have streamed before. They won't have many followers or any followers and some of them won't even have a profile picture. But another option is you can also check the Twitch chat logs by pressing forward slash user and then space and then the name of that person so you can see if they've also previously had any chat communications in your chat if you're unsure about whether or not someone is a new user obviously you don't want to be banning people that are actual viewers to your channel so there's a real trade-off here between being safe and also making sure that you're not restricting your community i'm going to link an article here on reddit that you may want to just read through in terms of some of the feedback that people have given when i was reading through this one thing that really stuck out for me was dark vipers suggestions here of of a file say and then a paste bin which is this list of names which is updated on a daily basis which can basically automate the process of banning bot accounts hate raid accounts known hate raid accounts by typing this command in your chat once you've installed fossabot so i'm now going to go through the process of installing fossabot and showing you what this looks like so first we're navigating to fossabot.com i'm logging in with twitch i'm going to allow access here within this bot you've got the option to nuke put channel filters and ban management There's there's also some other stuff like Discord and chat notifications and various other things like that. I've not used Fossabot before. I'm going to explore it a lot more. So subscribe to the channel if you want more videos about Fossabot. One thing I notice here is that this is a um, company. This is a UK limited company. Fossadev Limited with a legitimate England and Wales company number there. So this bot is a known regular bot and some really big streamers do use Fossabot. So if you're here and you're watching this and you're thinking this might be a little bit dodgy, let me reassure you that is absolutely not the case. So I'm now going to authorize for further access for this bot here with that in mind. Very similar to other bots that you've probably already got on your channel. Straight away within the documentation here, I can see that this dollar sign and then brackets accountage allows you to see how long a Twitch account has actually been registered. And this means that you're not having to click on the profile to see how long the account has been registered or even to go onto Twitch tracker to see the same information. So straight away, I'm seeing real value from this bot. Straight away, I also see within the nuke section of the documentation here, the ability Ability to use the exclamation point nuke and then a phrase whatever that phrase is again you could copy and paste that phrase if you do get hate raided and it will time out those users who match that phrase for 10 minutes this way you're not having to manually do this obviously if it's only 10 or 20 people that arrive in your chat and do the hate raid that's not too much of a problem but if you get a hundred or even five thousand people that hate raid you with the same hateful phrase this nuke command is obviously going to be very good and it will also clear that data from your chat as well. Within the Nuka section down the left hand side under moderating settings, you can also paste in a phrase here and allow a more manual timeout. If you're not comfortable doing it through the command, you can do it in the user experience here in the Fossa bot. But here you're able to allow more controls like timing them out for longer and enabling radiation. But you can also clear radiation nukes as well. Now to install this, you do need to make sure that you go to the bot controls here and click join channel. This will get the, ch the bot itself to join the channel, which then allows you to 
forward slash mod that bot. So you then need to go into your own chat and type forward slash mod and then a space and then at Fossabot. As illustrated here, press enter there. Hopefully you'll get a confirmation, but if you don't get a confirmation, try typing it without the at symbol and then it'll say here, Fossabot is already a moderator of the channel. Or you can go into your dashboard, go on community and look at roles manager and you should see Fossabot in here as a moderator. Here you can also add them manually through your dashboard rather than through your chat. Now I'm going to try doing the exclamation point file say with a space and then the URL paste bin which contains all of the known bots the hate raid bots I'm going to press enter on this and as we can see now all of these accounts that are listed in that file name are being automatically banned that took me about three or four seconds and it gives the bot IP grabber hate raid as the reason for the ban. I would recommend doing this every couple of days at least or ideally at least before you stream every time. So you may want to bookmark this URL here. Now anyone that doesn't feel comfortable going through that process that I've just showed you can still go through the process of doing this manually if you prefer to manually ban them. It just means it's going to take a little bit longer and take more time out of your day. Now at this point we know a little bit more about hate raids. We know why they're happening. We know what Twitcher sort of kind of doing about it and we've also taken some actions to increase moderation and even ban the known accounts but guess what you're still not immune from hate raids so now as a belt and braces approach i'm going to show you another method which basically involves enabling multiple actions through a multi-action switch on a stream deck feel free to use the amazon affiliate link in the description below if you don't own a stream deck but want to buy one as a result of this but you can also achieve similar things to what i'm about to show you with a touch portal and also with a leoran board which is also free. So there are multiple different options for enabling all the things I will show you in the next couple of minutes. So what I've done here, I've got a multi action switch that I've dragged onto my stream deck. This is my main menu that I normally have on my stream deck. It's nested within the OBS studio file here. The multi action switch resides in the stream deck. I have got another video all about multi action switches. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about how they work. You can check the video link in the description or also the card that I'll put up here. So we need to drag in a multi action switch which will basically enable a load of things to happen on Twitch and then you can turn them back off again when you press the same button again. So within this multi-action switch button here, there are 14 actions on the on switch and there are eight actions on the off switch. And I'm just gonna go through exactly what I've dragged in here. So I've made sure I've got the Twitch plugin here. Again, I'll put a video up and a card up on how you can install the Twitch plugins onto your stream deck because I have done a video about this. You need to have this installed and this will enable you to basically control Twitch and moderate through buttons on your chat and within twitch here i've dragged in a follower chat only so this enables follower only chat that means that anyone that isn't followed cannot chat i've cleared the chat here so that will clear any hateful messages in your twitch now one thing to be aware of here if you do have better ttv bttv emotes enabled sometimes that can block your chat from being cleared there's not much you can do about that i've tried to look into a solution to this and i've not seen a solution if you do have one please comment below and let me know i've got i've got delays here as well off than just one second delay just to allow those things to happen slowly over the course of a couple of seconds we're enabling emote only chat again this could be turned off quite quickly afterwards if you're content that the text chat is safe again we're going to play an advert as well because that just means that in that initial moment an advert will be run rather than you reacting to whatever's happening so it just buys you a little bit of time to anyone that's not subscribed or anyone that might be new to your channel but it also means if there are bots in your account then you're monetizing those bots a little bit as well well, hey, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, eh? We're enabling slow mode chat, which means that they can't repeatedly add messages. For me, I've just got something that puts like red lights on, just an acknowledgement that I'm angry. Then also through the Streamlabs OBS plugin or through the OBS Studio plugin, you can drag in some sources here, which basically deactivate certain sources. So for me, I can deactivate my alert box source, which means that alerts will not be coming through of different things that are happening. Finally, for me, I've got an Elgato Stream Deck button here that will open and launch a website and it'll launch my Streamlabs dashboard into cloudbot straight away which means i can disable chat alerts for me that will open up this page here which lists the modules and it's these chat alerts that i'm going to disable immediately which means that there won't be any further chat alerts for new followers and things like that it'll just disable that process you just need to make sure that you re-enable some of these things once you're content that it's safe again so there you go hopefully you found this useful in terms of knowing more about hate raids knowing how to avoid them and some practical guidance on them have a good day take care